Hey everyone, you're watching Andy's Gaming, and today we're going to have a look at a reasonably new game, gacha game, uh, out for a mobile device, um, just for Canada and Australia, so a soft launch at the moment, um, called Overhit. It's uh, been out in Korea and Japan for a little while already, um, quite some time. This is a very different game. Um, from what I'm told, uh, in terms of the Korea, Korean version and uh, this version, global version. Um, I've been playing the game for about uh, nine days or so now, um, really getting into it. Um, I really love these sorts of games. They kind of have a bit of an, a, an addictive vibe to them. Um, and uh, yeah, they're really a lot of fun. Um, and this one is, is no exception to that. So... Um, uh, today I just wanted to talk a bit about the game and um, go through some char characters that uh, are notable um, that I think are really useful and that I've used in my various teams quite consistently in the game, um, as well as take a look at the uh, characters that I'm also spending some time building up right now. Um, so let's just jump in. Um, if you have a look here uh, on my uh, hero list... Um, you can see, uh, you know, I've been spending a fair amount of time um, building up a few units here. Um, in terms of characters, most notable, really, uh, I think uh, Shume is um, one of the most notable characters um, that I've come across so far, mainly because uh, she's a really great uh, defender uh, with healing capability and um, a really awesome... Um, skill uh, called Flower Burst, which gives uh, a wide area of effect across all your allies, um, reducing the damage taken by a fair amount, which is quite useful. Um, she's also a water type, and uh, quite frequently, you know, in terms of affinity as well, she's really useful um, against the the red or kind of fire type. Um, uh, units in the game, especially in campaign mode. Um, another notable character or uh, unit that I've been using quite a lot, and I think it's quite popular as well, is um, Proxy. Um, Proxy is a really great damage dealer, mainly because he does multiple uh, things. He's got high damage um, in both his S1 skill, uh, Shadow Avatar, um, as well as a great uh, AoE heal on your allies as well, which is, you know, really useful, particularly late game when you really want to maximize all of your healing across um, across all your heroes, or as, have as much healing as you can. Um, he's got some really great uh, damage as well in his S2, um, which again is a an AoE as well, um, and also heals uh, your allies as well, so... That's fantastic, um, which is really great. Um, I'm spending a lot of time, you know, maximizing him. Um, and in terms of equipment, they're really kind of focusing up on um, improving his healing ability um, and make sure that I can reduce the damage he takes as, as much as possible. Um, this is a little, a little squishy. Um, another character, Helena, I've been... Um, pretty fortunate to kind of get an extra dupe of her to sort of bring her up a little bit more. She's quite useful in, um, I use her as a kind of a double healer type combination with Shume sometimes. Um, and she has a really great uh, S2 skill as well that um, gives a nice barrier. I haven't found it as useful as Shume's damage taken reduction. Um, the barrier seems to last not very long, kind of doesn't uh, you know, kind of gets blasted away pretty quickly in hard mode. Um, and the Resurrect, again, I'm not really finding Resurrection or Revival that great, um, particularly uh, in the hard mode sort of campaign, and I'll explain why um, a bit later. So Helena is uh, is one of the characters um, and I've been focusing on from a healing perspective. Um Cicero is something uh, is a unit I've not really spent a lot of time with until recently. I kind of came across um, a lot of um, high uh, level um, tiered uh, arena players using Cicero, and 
Um, initially, you know, I, they kind of discounted him and focused on more um, defense-related tanks that kind of had, had more um, just sort of pure defense buffs. But he's got um, a really great uh, S1 which gives you a heal over two allies, which is really useful. So self-healing as well as another ally quite often um, with him in the front line. Um, and also a really great dam uh, defense uh, buff there as well, um, which is really useful. Um, the, the, the cooldown on the skill is, is quite low too at uh, a minute, which isn't too bad for something like this. Um, and, you know, by, by applying some um, skill cooldown reduction as well, that that gives you a lot of um, benefit there as well to try and bring that down further. Uh, his S2 actually isn't too bad as well. It's a really great one enemy attack. Um, I've upped the skill quite a, you know, a, a reasonable amount so far. Um, and uh, the final attack in the chain kind of deals uh, uh, the damage across the three, which is which is useful. Um, he also casts Reflect Damage, which is kind of really great for um, raid bosses in particular, I find, um, where, uh, you know, you really want to maximize how much damage you're, you're uh, hitting on the, on the boss as frequently as possible. So he's really great. Um, the other hero I was fortunate to have when I, um, when I did my first uh, pull, I think the free temple, um, when you start the game, I managed to get Angelo um, right off the bat, and he's really kind of been my main damage dealer right through easy mode campaign. Um, and sort of been pairing him with Proxy a little bit, but I'm finding him less and less useful um, as I get further through. He's just not um, got as much damage um, as some of my higher um, raised level uh, SR units, um, particularly when I start kind of reducing their um, uh, skill type uh, limitations, um, particularly in you know, a hit, hit sort of percentage limitations, um, and increase their damage capability, yeah. But he's still a really great unit, um, I still use him in P in PvP Arena a lot, um, and I like his leader skill, I quite use that quite a lot in Arena, um, try and sort of focus on dark unit damage, um, that 40% increase is really great on his leader um, ability. Um, the other unit I've kind of come across and sort of been using a little bit and playing around with is Harima, um, you know, really focusing on building out his status effect skill, um, his S2 skill, um, which, you know, blind is, is sort of useful. I've got a lot of success rate improvement um, equipment. I've Focusing, focusing on that, so that I can um, be more successful in the blinding. Um, I usually uh, try and hit the first wave of attacker in campaign or arena. Um, it's my first skill. I usually fire off just to try and reduce the uh, the enemy capability right from the beginning and put them on the back foot. Um, and uh, yeah, again, kind of focusing in on um, reducing as much damage on him as I can. Um, as well, try and keep him alive for as long as possible. Um, but he's been really useful, and his S1 isn't too bad as well. Um, you know, he's he's able to deal a reasonable amount of damage, um, and I use him a lot for kind of single enemy damage, um, and um, when I combine him with a chill unit, or um, if I'm, you know, fighting a sort of a fire team, or... Um, in campaign, I'll, I'll use him in terms of getting his affinity bonus as well. So yeah, those are kind of my sort of notable characters. Um, in terms of characters I'm building right now, I'm looking at starting to build out Mina a bit. Um, just limit breaking her and, and um, raising her level cap. Um, yeah, just uh, really trying to get more um, light-based attack units um, in play as well. Um, I'm finding, you know, there's quite a fair few difficult uh, hard mode campaign stages which use a lot of light enemies um, and my dark team gets hit um, fairly hard and doesn't have a huge amount of survival compared to um, the difficulty of the stages. So, um, so yeah, really trying to sort of combat that a little bit. Um, and uh, she's got a, a reasonably decent um, damage on her S1, uh, sorry, S2. 
Um, and her S1 as well um, is a pretty powerful attack. Um, I'm starting to uh, look at Malpion as well. Um, managed to get a, a couple of um, dupes of him or a dupe of him and um, kind of experimenting a little bit with poison. Um, particularly for the raid bosses as well, just to sort of maximise the amount of ongoing uh, damage over time um, that uh, they're experiencing. And yeah, so she's she's one I'm sort of looking at maybe building out a bit. Um, Leon as well uh, is, again, kind of trying to represent um, some defence in a light team um, as well. Maybe Cicero, um, you know, take a back, back seat to Leon um to sort of build out an all light team try and uh, get through some of the more difficult light based stages in hard mode um so yeah I've, I've kind of broken his cap a little bit um have yet to really invest in any of his abilities or change his skills um so he's still i'm still raising his level so his still combat ability is still quite low um but yeah um, i've seen a few people using him and i kind of quite like him just from the perspective of I think he's cool, cool as well. Um, Necroid I've seen being used quite a fair bit um, as well, and I haven't been lucky enough to get um, that many of him in my temples um, when I'm doing gacha, but um, he has you know, shown quite a lot of usefulness. Um, I've seen a lot of people use him um, really well. And you can never have too much healing going on in, in a team, particularly in hard mode campaign. Um, but yeah, still looking at raising him. Um, his removal of buffs and things like that uh, can be useful in arena, um, as well as in raid. Um, and, you know, his heal's not too bad um, with a barrier as well, which, you know, it's kind of, I guess, a... Um, not so good version of Helena um, from that point of view, but you know, able to scale his uh, skills up um, a lot more than Helena um, in, in terms of you know getting getting level caps raised and um, bringing up his uh, his level um, to surpass that of uh, an SSR um, set of stats. So yeah, really focused on on trying to pull more of of that one. Um, and finally, Dark Hell, um, you know, I've really got a bit of a gap when it comes to the green uh, affinity. I uh, don't really have very many built or a decent um, SRs or SSRs uh, on the, the green side of things. And um, that kind of really hurts later in hard mode uh, when you're trying to form a team that, you know, takes advantage of the extra 50% um, uh, damage and also the reduction of damage from, you know, from uh, water units. Um, and in particular, I'm, I'm going through some difficulties at the moment with some really strong stages um, that have the blue sort of water units primarily in them. So looking to use him, I've used him a couple of times um, as a, a sort of a support hero um, from my uh, friends list and in the guild, and, and he's, you know, got some decent AoE when he's fully maxed out. So I'm really focusing on him. Um, in terms of, you know, looking at uh, giving some advice around how to, sort of, where to focus and what to do when you first start out, um, I'm really, uh, you kind of got, I guess, 10 really key kind of bits of advice, um, that I would kind of impart on anyone looking to start uh, playing the game. Um, the main thing, I guess, from a beginner point of view is really, right from the start, invest in your super rare limit breaking um, or any SSRs that you've managed to reach to level 50. Um, I think level 50 is still, you know, a really good, uh, you know, a, a good level to bother investing, um, you know, fortifying and grading as well as skills um so that's what i would do focus on putting all of your resources initially into your srs that you're kind of limit breaking at the time you have a lot of uh, getting a lot of dupes of um anyone from those no that notable list i told you is in particular useful is particularly useful um I, s I guess tip number two would be invest in aoe skills uh, as much as you can so any any units with aoe skills are really important um very early on like they, they're very useful 
they're also really useful in arena um, as well because um, you want to try and maximize the amount of damage across the enemy's team as you possibly can um, and look try and cover if you can as well when you're starting to build stuff up try and cover the AOE um, skilled units across as many inf affinities as you can um, just so that you um, you know have the right hero doing damage um, for the right stage during um, during the the campaign, which is really useful um, in later stages of easy as well as um, in most of the hard mode campaign. Um, it's very important to take advantage of those affinity mechanics um, later on. Um, for arena, I would really focus on building a dark DPS and light healing. Um, team initially. Um, there's very few teams out there that use light DPS units. So that means they are not doing the one and a half damage times damage um, using damaging skills to your dark units. Um, so they're not really taking advantage of the, the discord um, between the two. Um, whereas if you're using dark units, you're doing one and a half times damage to their light units. So you're, you are taking advantage of that. Um, and most light units, uh, typically in arena, being healers, you know, you want to really maximize damage on healers as soon as you can um, in any uh, in any fight um, in arena. Um, also for arena, try and have as much healing capacity spread over the team as you can. Um, so two healers in the team are great, but if you also have proxy and Cicero doing heals, you really have a great advantage there. So you you want to maximize that. Um, I guess don't worry too much about revival skills is another one because revival is really only useful in hard mode when you want to do that last minute revive on a single hero um, to get the three star clear on the stage. Units in hard mode will really kick the ass of any revived unit before you've really had a chance to get them back in the game and all you've done is waste turns when you're doing, uh, when you could be doing damage. Um, so what you want to do is spend more time doing heals in between AOE skills and status effect skills um, and focus on um, those uh, stato status effect skills upping the defense of the team as well. So for example, I like to start off the stage wave with a status effect skill to slow down um, the, the stage enemies and then follow up with a big AOE uh, damage hit and then a heal. and. I basically repeat that process um, to continue to catch the timeouts of the effects and keep units buffed for as long as possible. Um, another tip is think critically about your formation. So units in the back get great uh, buffs to defense, which really come into play in hard mode campaign and arena. Um, but also use affinity advantage units in the front as well. So preferably with high defense or a dark light unit to try and maximize your... Um, ability to shrug off damage. I prefer to only really place a single unit in the front, um, a single unit in the middle, and maybe um, as many as possible in the back to take advantage of the formation buff, so full, full three uh, units in the back. One thing I've been experimenting with is uh, using the taunt skill. And I can show you that there. Um, uh, so for example, um, if I just bring up a stage here, uh, the 10, have a look at the, the team. Um, so if you look at my formation uh, here, um, I prefer to have my sort of single defense unit in the front um, and then a high defense unit in the middle, um, usually Shumi um, for defense. Um, and then the rest of my real damages and my main kind of healer, defender and uh, defense buff unit in the back. Um, one thing I've been experimenting with is uh, using taunt skills from the back line. So in that circumstance, I'd be using something like um, Gamonski, I think that's her name, um, in the back here. Um, and uh, really take that advantage of that 30% buff um, and then use that unit's, uh, I think it's his S1 his S1 skill here to taunt um, a particular enemy um, and make uh, myself a priority target. Um, 
And yeah, I've, I've seen that work a little bit, you know, particularly I've managed to taunt the uh, main hero enemy of some of the um, special stages where uh, some of the heroes uh, fight against you. And, um, and that's sort of taken them out of action for a period of time um, where they've sort of really just been trying to hit this particular hero in the back line and um, I'm able to sort of up the defense and really stop that from um, doing as much damage to my to my DPS as as, um, as I'm going through the stage. Um, so that's one thing. The formation doesn't work well though with um, the sort of the T formation. Um, let me find it again. It doesn't work so well. Um, in some stages where AOE is laid down frequently and all your units take a lot of damage quickly, um, in those cases, you know, it's really, um, it's really about trying to fortify uh, your units as much as possible. So focusing on buffing, um, and defending and, um, you may even sort of move another, um, defense unit in the front here and sort of have a bit of a cross type, um, type, uh, pattern to sort of try and distribute more of the damage across um, your units in the front. Um, another tip is uh, don't save your Dimension Gems for anything in the future, um, but make sure you only do 10 pool gutches. Um, there's a lot of guided missions, um, and those uh, that you you know those missions require that you do 10 pool gutches, so um, just get as much done as you can to really limit break your SRs quickly. Um, and do, uh, uh, you know, get good rewards at the same time. Um, when you raid, make sure that you are a number one damager in the end so that you always get the best rewards. Um, that's really important um, to only do levels um, that... Uh, only do levels where you know you can make highest tier in the end um, because... Uh, you should get better gear overall if you do. Um, finding higher level raids sometimes is good with about half health remaining on the raid boss um, and some decent time still on the clock. Uh, so two hours or more is really great. Something to look for if you want to try and get higher tier gear than you can if you're soloing the boss um, at a particular level. Um, tip number nine, I guess, when assigning gear to your units, make sure that gear really focuses on enhancing their strengths. Um, sounds kind of a bit obvious and a bit ridiculous. Um, but occasionally you add more units to your list and start swapping in and out units from your main team. Um, and you'll start having a bit of a spread of your best gear um, as you do that, sort of adding just organically as you go. I find it useful at certain points to have a mass unequip of all your units and re-equip focusing on your most important unit right now. Um, usually I'll start with re-equipping my defenders first, then my status effectors, and then focus on my healers, and then my damage is last. This makes sure you know that you've really equipped the best equipment to your active users, uh, your active units. Um, uh, and that's really important, particularly later on um, when you're wanting to make use of those substats and uh, and high uh, fortified gear. And to close out this video, you know, my final tip, join, join a guild and have fun. It's really hard sometimes to remember that this is a game and it should be fun to play. Um, there's a grow growing community out there on Discord for the game. Um, there's you know, a lot of content, useful information being posted every day. Um, so p take part in that community as well and, you know, really be uh, part of it. It's a great kind of aspect of the game as well um, to share information and, uh, you know, have a look at what people are doing. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, if you do, give it a thumbs up. That's always great. Um, if not, give it a thumbs down. Either way is good too. Tell me what you think in the comments as well about, you know, your... Uh, <clears throat> most notable units and any tips that you might have and you want to share. Anyway, this is Andy signing off.